So this is going to be my fairly off the cuff, semi-scripted attempt to explain some of the major faults in feminist patriarchy theory. And I don't think I know it all, but I think I do know that there are some big holes. Number one, feminist patriarchy theory, as I understand it, and as can be readily looked up elsewhere, seems to imply that all men everywhere in history have done nothing but actively attempt to oppress women and minorities. Or at least if you're being intersectional, white men have done so to women and minorities throughout all of history. The issue with this, number one, is that it demands intentionality. It demands that every man in history has agreed to enact a specific set of oppressive behaviors. Every man. That means that children, historically gay men, back in ancient Rome, who really weren't concerned with women, yeah, doesn't matter. The fact that they were fucking other men, that was oppressive. Not like there wasn't a bunch of other things that ancient Romans were doing that might have been oppressive, like, I don't know, invading Gaul and Britannia and generally being, you know, land-grabbing jerks, a whole bunch of other stuff they could have been doing. Um... And then we get to my next problem. Um, it, it involves total male subscription. I mean, that's that's part of that intentionality. It it demands that all men be involved. And here's my question about that. Does feminist patriarchy theory demand that all males be associated with this? Because if that's the case, feminist gender theory dictates that a female to male trans is a male in a dysphoria inducing frame which means that they're male the feminine frame has nothing to do with the male gender which means that that male as a female to male is going to be giving up all of their learned experiences all of their previous life experiences and engaging in behaviors that op oppress that series of lived experiences and a male to female trans would have to acknowledge the dissolution of any and all hi cat patriarchy patriarchy oh my god would have to deny all of the inherent privilege in their previous assigned sex in order to conform to their actual gender which is female gender fluid individuals on a day where they are actively displaying and, and registering as male gendered would have to engage in behaviors that would be oppressive and totalitarian and destructive to any feminine behaviors they might later undertake. Um, it also includes prepubescent males and the asexual. I mean, having done a little bit of digging and probably some bad math, indexmundy.com tells me that there's probably about 8 to 10 percent of the global population right now is males under 10. So they have to be, while in the midst of developing the, one of their single most important emotional neotenous bonds to their mothers, be engaging in behaviors that involves oppressing one. And to be fair, asexual males, which Tumblr very, one of the very few things Tumblr has got correct, where they point out that asexuality is a sexuality. Asexual males don't give a damn. They're not there to have sex with you. Sure, an asexual could be greedy, and if they own a business, they might be a jerk to you, but they're not going to go out of their way to conspire against a gender that really doesn't matter to them in any sexual manner. And by this same token, we can extend this a little further. Here's, here's your bonus bit. Poison m and theory, Schrodinger's rapist. The 10%, not only is that probably a, a massive overinflation of male predation. I'm sure other people have touched on it. If, if necessary, I'll go and dig up some links. But male to female... Well, are they raping before they become female? 
female to male? Are they raping after they be after they have a a, a matching frame? What? A, there's no way that that ten percent of eight to ten percent of of prepubescent global population is running around raping people. Thanks for failing at intersectionality, feminism. Thanks. Real nice.